Well, it's official. This YouTube thing is a go. I am headed out of the office as we speak. Heading up to the northern part of the state. I've got a couple hour drive ahead of me here. Hopefully we can get on a little bit of an evening smallmouth bite. Uh, I'm going to be doing some kind of half Euro fishing, half normal fly fishing, kind of a hybrid thing I've been doing, but I got all sorts of good stuff with me right now. Got the fly box looking good, all rigged up. Euro box is looking good. Rods rigged, even remembered the GoPro, which I can't believe. That's usually the one I forget. But I think what I'll do, I'm gonna get on the road here. I got a couple things to do before I head north. Um, probably talk first about one of the patterns I tied last night in preparation for today. And then we'll get on the water, do a little fishing. So the next time I see you, we'll probably be behind the vise, and then we're gonna go from the vise to the water. All right, so I've already got this crayfish pattern started a little bit here. <clears throat> I just use a three and a half millimeter tungsten bead um, on a number four hook, and then about seven wraps of .030 lead, wire, lead free wire. Um, just using a 140 denier thread here, but first material I'm gonna put in, we wanna build the kind of the head portion of the crayfish, and I'm gonna use a little bit of coyote fur, fox fur, whichever you'd like. Now we're gonna add our carapace. This is just Kylie's exoskin in kind of a mottled brown color. A lot of our crayfish in the northern part of Iowa have a brownish exoskeleton to them. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna pick out a couple of Hungarian partridge feathers. Uh, these are just towards the end of their wings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the feathers here and I'm gonna strip them down just a little bit. That way I can create a nice kind of claw shape. Now what we need to do is add a little bit of wire that's gonna hold the carapace in place when we are done tying the fly. So I'm just gonna put a little loop in the end of this small copper wire. I'm gonna tie it down. I'm gonna tie it on my side so you guys won't probably see it much, but that's okay, that's what we want. When, once that is tied in, I'm then gonna pick another feather off of my Hungarian partridge, and I'm gonna pick one that's more towards the tail. You'll see how different that feather is there. It's got a nice pretty mottled pattern to it. This is gonna kind of give this fly a leggy aesthetic.
Okay, we're getting close to the last couple steps here. So now what I like to do is that little bit of crayfish dub I've still got left out of the container. I'm gonna dub this in. Put just a little bit of dub collar on there. And there is what a really, really well tied crayfish pattern will get you. So, real leggy looking. Got all those nice antennae sticking out the front. Notice how nice that carapace looks. It's got the actual natural carapace aesthetic to it. That right there is a fish catching machine. And now we are going to go test it out on some big smallmouth bass, hopefully. We made it to the spot. It is a whopping 90 degrees outside right now. I think we've got about three hours till sunset so I'm gonna get out play in the water a little bit hopefully there's not too much pressure I haven't seen anybody out on the water right now um, I'm at a pretty well-known public location but there's a couple spots that get passed over they're kind of fly fisherman friendly and not great for spin guys so we're gonna go investigate my guess is there's gonna be a lot of rock bass there's gonna be Probably quite a few smallmouth and maybe a couple walleyes mixed in, so we'll see what happens. Um, but now let's go tromping through the water, see if we can catch a couple fish. So these little spots like this are kind of funny. They're just ones you walk up on, don't think much of it. But you start bouncing flies through here, and then all of a sudden you do that and hook a smallmouth. <laughs> oh, that was first cast. I've been here about 15 seconds. And there's a smallmouth. So that crayfish pattern that I tied. Whoop! He gobbled that one right up. And he ate it weird, which is going to make this a bit of a challenge. There we go. Toss him right back in there. So there you go. Ate that little crow we tied. So a little basic technique for you here. I'm just using a Euro line, real light tippet, and I'm just kind of taking this crayfish pattern that we tied and I'm banging it around in the substrate doing this. Not gonna be a big one, but not a walleye, is it? We'll figure it out. Looking like a small mouth to me. Yeah, decent little bass. Good deal. So this spot tends to be inundated with woof, all sorts of smallmouth in this kind of 10 to 14 inch size class. So cute little guy. There he goes. But look at how nice that little crayfish fly splays his claws out. That's what we wanted off that pattern. You can see how leggy he looks. That's a perfect imitation. These bass are so keyed on fleeing crayfish this time of year, it's wild. Um, to just kind of help me keep an eye on that, like that. If I get a bite where they, they kind of take it on the fall. Pretty decent fish, about like the first couple we caught. He's a nice fat one though. Good deal. Come here, buddy. A little hook in his mouth. Whew. And right now, you'll see right here, he's shooting a little uh, gummy looking stuff out of his cloaca. That's because they're uh, crapping out crawdad paste. So, tis the season. 
that last fish did a really good job soaking my GoPro, which I don't appreciate. But it is what it is. We got the screen cleaned off. It's looking sharp. Oh. So sometimes you get some weird bites in here. Sometimes you're snagging little chunks of rock and whatever. And kind of falsely indicates a bite, but there we go. <clears throat> Man. Boy, they blister this thing. They love that crawdad fly. It's feeling like maybe a little better bass. Can't quite tell yet. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a nice one. Not a huge one, just a nice one. Haven't seen that 20 incher we're looking for yet. But... Boy, he is bulldogging me though. Didn't see that rod just folded. Yeesh. Come on, dude. It's funny with these 10 foot, 10 inch, six weight uh, Diamondback Ideal Nymph rods, you can really put some side pressure on these guys, but uh, you never snap off 4X. It's just a perfectly designed rod. So the guy who designed the rod, his name's Joe Goodspeed. He's probably the best rod designer in the world right now. But uh, man, he got this one right. No question about that. Come here, buddy. Sweet. I'm not even going to get a picture of this one. He's not big enough, but there we go. That's better. Much, much better. Grab him by the tail. Let him swim. There he goes. All right. Just hooked up again. Another little bronze back. Boy, these guys are tough. Love that. So you can tell that fish ate it on the upswing. See how he's hooked right in the roof of the mouth? It's kind of almost wedged in there. But he kind of ate it on the on the swing at the tail end there. Cute little guy. Boy, he's got nice colors. Look at that. Wow. Get out of the sun here a little bit, but spots like this are funny. They're uh, <clears throat> not real deep, but if you make a good cast into the top of the pool, you just kind of bonk that crawfish through there. I just got touched in there. There should be, oh, I got hit again. Should be a few fish hanging out in there. My guess is this is probably a rock bass that's messing with me right now. They have a tendency to do this. Or it's a small mouth. That was pretty cool, huh? Not a real big one, but athletic. We like the athletic ones. And they can't all be big, right? Mouthful of crayfish. Step out here so we can see the sky a little better. Nice, pretty colors. Boy, these fish have nice wide tails on them, too. Love that. All right, friend. Whoop, wrong way, dude. There you go. Okay, we're gonna get a little closer to the piling this time. Well, that didn't take long now, did it? This one acts a little tougher, maybe. He'll probably be 12 inches long, like every stinking fish I've caught this evening. Come here, brother bear. Ooh, don't do that. Let's keep you in the water. Come on over. Man, they put some pressure on you guys in this place, don't they? Got a messed up jaw, too. Face only a mother could love. Another one in this little inconspicuous puddle. Most people don't realize it's got a little bit of depth to it because... Position-wise in the stream, it's kind of a weird one, but it's got depth. Little guy. Bye-bye. And of course, fly line tangle. I should say mono rig tangle. It's a little more common than fly line tangle. Okay, 
let this sink against the wall here one time. Oh, that's dead meat up there. Yeah. Ah, hung it up. Gotta go get it. Oh, never mind. Always love when they come out like that. So there is a bit of a ledge there that those fish will sit behind. It's part of the reason I'm using the technique that I am. Oh, hey now. Mr. Attitude. What's up there? Let's get you down here in the sunlight. You're a pretty one. Nice dark bronze back. That's about fish number 40 in the first, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes. It's about every minute at this point. So not a real big one, but what I want you to notice, look at this tummy. Oh my gosh. Look how fat, full, oh, I can feel him in there. Look at that. He's full of crawdads. I can feel the shells with my thumb. There's one right there. There's another one right there. And then there it feels like there might be another one up here. So he is full of crawfish. Okay, let's see if I can get him here. There he is. Oh, just dropped a claw. Here he comes. There you go. That's what they're eating right there. When we say match in the hatch, those two boys together are about perfect. There you go. So again, just letting it fall. Lots of times they'll pick it up on the fall, but I'm just watching as I'm stripping through this. There we go. So I talked earlier, I thought we'd catch some rock bass. Look at the size of this flipping tomato can. Holy fatness. And look at how good they eat that craw. We like that. I'm gonna have to put my finger down in his mouth to get that fly out. Okay, dude, how'd you eat this? There we go. But man, look at how pretty those fish are in here. Nice cherry red eye. Pretty speckles. And they are abundant. So I slid down into the tail out a little bit here and made a cast across to that far bank you see over there. Ooh. Um, and managed to hook a pretty decent bass. So still working, doesn't matter the pool. This technique is just flat out deadly. Well, next cast, we got something decent here. I was, uh, I made a little different cast. I made it upstream a little farther, let it roll down a little more. And this fish uh, kind of picked it up as it was swinging through rather than just actually retrieving it. And I'm not sure what it is yet. It sure acts like a small mouth to me. I just haven't seen him. I don't think it's a real big one, but I don't know, maybe 14, 15 be my guess. I'm getting, powdered right now I know that yeah probably probably 14 not a real big one but about the best colors you could ever ask for on a fish I'll tell you that whoa look at that man that is pretty jeez gobbled that craw All right, so while I'm letting this pool kind of settle out again, let me explain my rig and everything to you here. So we've got that crayfish fly that I made, still looking perfectly intact after about 50 fish now. Um, we're fishing that on a six foot section of 4X tippet to 
about 10 feet of indicator leader material which is then connected to this nice bright orange ESN fly line made by Rio uh, it's just a Rio shorty is what they call it it's a real short Euro nymphing style line I'm not having to make long casts so this is perfect for what I'm doing um, nice pretty Orvis Hydros reel just maybe 100 yards of backing on there um, but the most important part of this setup is the rod so this is a Diamondback Ideal Nymph 10 foot 10 inch 6 weight it's a 4 piece rod uh, a lot of people see that 10 foot 10 inch and go whoa that's a bit excessive um, it is except the 10 foot 10 is critical for properly setting the hook on extraordinarily light tippet so if this was a much shorter rod the taper wouldn't allow you to set the hook um, without totally exploding the the tippet section so that 10 foot 10 inch is essential to be able to set the hook properly with these light wire hooks that i'm using and then the six weight i like to have because it's got a little bit more backbone than like the two or three weights we use for trout and the advantage that that poses is if i get these fish kind of out here in this heavy current if they decide to bulldog me or god forbid they make a run downstream um, i actually have some power to be able to turn this and still not break the fish off so every piece on here is critical for the technique that I'm doing. Well, I threw up into the fast water, and once you know it, there's a nice one hanging out in a primo feeding lane where all fish like to live because there's food everywhere, barely hooked. That's a good one. But the way this works is I'm going to take the, the fly here. I'm going to make an upstream cast. I'm going to let that fly sink a little bit. And then I'm going to give it a kind of a stripping, popping retrieve. And sometimes take the rod tip and just bounce and pop and kind of jig it. Or I'll take the rod tip and you'll notice I can just drag it and then drop it and drag it and drop it. So it integrates a lot of different techniques to be able to uh, to get down into the habitat of these bass. And the reason that we run such light tippet material and light hooks and um, straight monofilament line is because in these little bit swifter sections of water where sometimes a sink tip line and heavy flies won't get down enough, this sinks so quickly with such a small <clears throat> diameter fly that you can get it down in the kill zone and keep it down there. The key is you got to keep it down where the fish are at. And the reason for that is these fish are in here actively feeding on crayfish. And to be in the kill zone, you gotta be clear down in the substrate at all times. You can't come up and out of it like you would with a sink, sink tip line. You can't just drag um, the sinking line through the rocky habitat because you're gonna tear up fly line um, or tippet material. So this is really the best way to be able to do this. Um, and obviously we catch a lot of bass doing it. We <clears throat> catch a lot of walleyes doing it. Um, no shortage of rock bass and other miscellaneous species as well. And when I'm using this technique, I like to start at either the, the very head of the pool and work down or the very tail out of the pool and work up. And earlier in the video, I started at the head and worked down. Now that I've worked downstream a little ways, I am going to start at the tail end, work my way up, and hopefully pick up one or two more fish doing this before it gets too dark. So I'm gonna cut the video here for just a second to save battery life. And if I hook up, I will restart it. Okay, so using that technique, we did hook up again. About 20 seconds after I cut the video, of course, that's how it always works. Oh, great jump, love to see that. But just another nice, solid smallmouth bass. Not a real big one. Just the perfect size for the technique that we're using here. Give him a little belly scoop. Boy, that jig hook was not coming out. That was glued in there. Sorry, dude. Perfect. Nice, healthy little guy. Feel his tummy a little bit. 
kind of empty. Might explain why he bit that fly. We might have hooked into a little better one here. I don't think he's that big, but he's leaving a pretty good swirl, I would say. I'm going to go ahead and get this guy on the reel. Oh my gosh, it's a freaking huge walleye. And when we talk about, like, phenomenal technique to target anything, this is what I mean. This is a perfect, perfect dinner fish if you're wanting to keep one. But look at that pin right in the corner of the mouth. And I'm going to mess with my line here to get this guy kind of in the gill flap. Because I am going to get a picture with this one too. People always like to see the oddities. Well, check that guy out. That is one beautiful looking walleye there. Nice. All right, we're hooked up late in the day here. I don't think this is another walleye. It's acting more like it's probably a decent smallmouth, but he's got me folded over pretty good. I got both hands on the rod and really can't turn him. Rod tips in the water. Just gonna sit here and let him dance. Oh yeah, nice bass. Oh, he just vomited up a bunch of crawdads. That's really cool. They were all orange and digested and crazy looking. That's neat. Wish you would have done that a little closer to the camera. But, nice one. Really nice small mouth. Yeah, he's a little better than our average for the day. If he'll let me grab him, jeepers. There we go. That's a football. Another one that's been caught before. Well, it's officially getting dark outside now, but uh, wow, crazy evening, three hours put in, probably caught somewhere around the 100 mark for smallmouth, rock bass, walleyes in combination with each other, so I would say that's a, a drive well spent to say the least. Um, this be in the first video, so I appreciate you guys checking it out, following along with the fly tying portion and a little bit of awesome fishing that uh, Northern Iowa has to offer, so I'm excited to keep doing these videos, keep making stuff for you, um, and I thank all you guys for following along. If you want, leave a like, comment if you saw something you liked, didn't like, whatever, if you have any questions, um, and subscribe. There's going to be more of these in the future. It does take a little bit of time, a little bit of money outside of work to be able to go out and do some of this stuff, so uh, I will appreciate your support, and hopefully you join me next time. Thanks, everybody.